Here in Phoenix, we don't have trees that change colors um, to let us know that it's fall. So I wanted a project that I could sit out that would remind me that it's fall. And what better thing to do than to make a platter with some orange resin. So to start, I've got this beautiful piece of pearl from uh, Worldwide Pearls. I'll put a link to their Instagram down below. Um, it's about two inches thick, so I'm just cutting it in half here, and that's going to give me the pieces I need. And what you see me doing here is I'm trying to line it up to see kind of where I want these pieces to line up and what's going to look good. For today's project, I'm going to be using some Illuminite Clear Slow, and then uh, for the color, I'm just going to be using some Illuminite Orange dye that's going to be translucent. So I'm not a big fan of using uh, the, the jaws to hold on to the resin. I just don't know if it's going to, to hold or shatter. So I always use a glue block. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using a glue block with some five minute epoxy. Um, and I'll be using that on both sides of it. I've been practicing a lot with my bowl gouge on resin and I've got to say it's starting to, to get a little bit easier. Uh, you'll see me go back and forth between the bowl gouge and my negative rec scrapers but I do try to use the bowl gouge a little bit more. It does seem to go through the resin faster. I'm just using these dividers here to mark the, the center where I want just a small foot. A little bit of the resin leaked underneath the wood um, and it was probably I don't know about an eighth inch thick so I'm just uh, you know using whatever method I can uh, to get down to the bare wood here so I'm switching back and forth but I, I really went with the bowl gouge it just seemed to do the better job of, uh, of hogging this uh, resin off I wasn't too worried about it chipping out because I knew once I got down to wood I would 
take it a little bit more cautiously and, and make shallower cuts. This is really where the, the platter really starts to take shape and I start to get the curves on the back that I really want. you but I just find it oddly satisfying the way that the ribbons come off of this resin here.
been saving up for a while to get these easy wood uh, jaws and I've got to say it was uh, really enjoyable. I spent a lot of time uh, going back and forth between the, the different jaws and the, and the jumbo jaws and it was just really nice to be able to, to click them and, uh, and replace them. When I'm holding the piece on with the, the jaws, the jumbo jaws, um, I slow the lathe down to the recommended 600 and I try to use the pushing action as you see me doing here. And I try not to put too much pressure going across the uh, piece. I've, I have had them come out on me. So uh, here I'm just taking really light, uh, careful cuts as I go across it. So just be careful. I'm going to be wet sanding here using uh, some 600 and 800 uh, dry wet sanding paper and then you'll see there I've got the Zona paper out um, thanks to Zach um, over at uh, Envy Woodworks uh, for turning me on to those. I got those at, uh, at Turner's Warehouse, not sponsored, I paid for them, but man do they do a really, really good job. I haven't used this buffing wheel in quite some time and while I was using it I remembered why I'm just not good at it um, really not perfectly happy with the finish that it put on but it did okay mm -hmm. 